Hey everybody, how's it going? Like you're really gonna answer me. I mean, you're in video world. I suppose you could comment and say, I'm good, how are you? I don't know, this whole video thing is, uh, I'm still kind of getting used to it. So the other day while I was out hiking, I was beginning to wonder if there are many videos out there on how to submit to a call to artist submission. Artist opportunity. Like if you look at YouTube, you can see and, and you type in call to artist, you're going to get a lot of actual calls to artists. But these are people actually looking for artists. They're looking for you to submit things. But have you ever walked down the street and like seen a sculpture or like walked through the park and seen a sculpture or piece of art and wonder, hey, how did that guy or that girl get that piece of art in that spot? Like what did they do to actually get it there? Well, there's a process and it's a pretty involved process and it can sometimes be a little overwhelming. I mean, at least it was for me when I first looked into it. But what I found is as long as you are somewhat organized and you have all your ducks in a row, it's actually not as bad as you might think. So I figured that that's kind of what I would talk about today because it's one of those things where I don't do much of the call to artist submissions right now just because I've got a lot of other work coming in. But I do plan to do call to artist submissions in the future. And I've got a few projects that I am making specifically for that. So here's the deal. One of the first things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to actually find a call to artist submission that you want to submit to, right? Go to your local arts commission. Now, if your town's too small, go to the next big town. Most large cities have an arts commission and you can get on their email list. Once you're on their email list, they'll send you all the new call to artist submissions that they've got like every month. Um, figure out how far you're willing to travel. And I get on every single call to artist submission website that you can. Uh, two of the ones that I stay really connected to is one is called callforentry.org and you just have to type in you know what type of medium you do and push the button and it turns up all of that particular type of medium. The other one that I go to is um, California Arts Council. Now I know it's California but they also list everything in the United States. Some of the bigger cities will do that. Like I'm also on the email list for Phoenix, Arizona and Tucson, Arizona. So I get all of their call to artist submissions plus I get whatever else they happen to list around the state and around uh, America. Okay, so let's say that you actually found a call to artist submission that fits you to a T and you're thinking, man, I know I could do that. What do you do next? Well, first you read what they want. All right, every single call to artist submission is going to give you a detail of exactly what it is they want. Now, they don't all want the same thing and they don't all want it the same way. So each one is going to be different. However, you can have some of your stuff ready. That way, when you're ready to submit, all you have to do is copy and paste or change the title on something. But here's some documents that you're going to have to have. All right. They may call them different names. They may have you know different links that are required. But start working on a biography. They want to know who you are as an artist, as a person. So sit down and write that if you haven't already. Let them know where you came from, where you get your inspiration, what drives you, what motivates you. You know what gets you up in the morning and gets you excited. You know make it. Make it exciting, all right? The other thing they're gonna ask for is a resume. And you gotta look at your resume as a living document, all right? What you did at the age of 16 is gonna be different than what you do at the age of 50, all right? So make sure that your resume isn't some outdated piece of paper that doesn't explain who you are today, all right? Be willing to be flexible. 
all right? Roll some things off the resume that aren't relevant to the job that you're applying for, all right? And this is a job, all right? It's a call to artists, but it's a job. So if you are doing a call to artist submission for a festival of interactive themed art pieces, then you don't necessarily want to have a resume that's full of paintings, all right? So you may have a couple of different resumes, resumes that actually focus in on the call to artist submission that you're doing. Make sure that it's relevant to what it is you're submitting to, okay? Makes sense, right? All right, one of the other things that they're probably gonna ask for is um, references, all right? Every time you do a job, you need to get a reference, whether it's just one individual or multiple individuals. And this damn airplane is gonna keep flying over because I'm right here next to the airport and it drives me freaking crazy sometimes. Okay, so after biography, after resume, then you wanna look at references, okay? They wanna see some references of people that you've done some work for before. Now, long as these references are up to date, you know, that's a good thing. Don't send them a reference where the phone number is out of date or the person doesn't work there anymore. It just shows that you don't keep in contact with them or, or you know, it's an outdated reference for you. So make sure that you have a current up-to-date reference. Make sure you get a reference for every single project you do, all right? That's important, all right? You want to know that people are happy with your work and they are willing to give you a reference. Um, and make sure in that reference they, you know, say something about your character. Did you finish on time? Did you come in under budget? Uh, were you pleasant to work with or were you just a freaky artist who spent wildly? You know, obviously you don't want to send in that reference because that would be uh, kind of uh, non-productive. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, make sure you get some honest, up-to-date references. Okay? A lot of the call to artist submissions are also going to ask for a, sometimes they call it a page of interest, a notice of interest, a statement of interest, but it's, they want to know why you think you would be good for their art. So basically you're doing a little essay on why you think you'd be a rock star at making their stuff. That's simply what it is. What is it that drove you to choose this submission? Did you see something in your head right off the bat? Was it something that just kind of like tingled inside of you? Was it all warm and fuzzy? You know, that's something you have to figure out. Why are you submitting that? I wouldn't say, oh, I really need the money, so that's why I'm trying to apply to everything that I can, because that's probably not gonna get you very far. So make sure that you actually apply to things that motivate you, things that will actually kind of like answer the call to your creativity. You know what I'm talking about? All right, so the statement of interest, that's gonna be one that you're gonna to have to come up with. It's going to be individual, all right, for each and every call to artist. So I know that's something you probably can't have pre-made, um, but it's something for you to start thinking about. And if you start writing one now, sometime you can kind of use that as a format to write others. The other thing they're gonna ask for are photos. Photos of previous work. All right. Now, some just say, hey, send us five photos and tell us what they are. Other call to artist submissions are actually very, very detailed. And they want you to not only send you a photo, but they specify the file type. They specify the size. They specify how they want it titled, because sometimes it'll be last name, underscore, project name, underscore, year. All right, so you have to pay attention to how they want those things, all right? Next to those photos that you're going to send, they want a list of those photos. Now, this is a written document that outlines photo number one is of this, and they want you to give a description. When did it happen? Uh, was it a paid piece? What is it not a paid piece? They want to see some detail to it but it has to match the photo numbers. So if they've matched, they want to be able to look at this list of photos that you have and reference the photo that you send and make sure that there's no confusion, all right? So that's something you're gonna to have to start to put together now, all right? Have a list of photos, have a list, 
give a description of when you did it and you know all the details sometimes they also ask for budgets all right again this is probably something you can't do in advance however be prepared to be able to show how you're going to spend their money all right let's say for example that you're doing a submission that is budgeted at ten thousand dollars all right you're going to have to show how you plan to spend that ten thousand dollars if it's airfare if it's travel if it's materials if it's labor uh, if you're hiring outside uh, consultants they want to see exactly how you're spending that money don't think that you're going to ask for ten thousand dollars to do a thing and say oh yeah here i'm going to just going to make this and and they're not going to want to know how you're going to do it be prepared to budget one of the things that i've noticed with call to artist submissions are they are very detailed and specific as to what they want and how they want it and here's why you have a great number of artists that are all applying for the same opportunity. So when the call to artists comes out and they say that they want a biography, a resume, references, pictures, list of pictures, budget, and they want it in that order, and they want it all in this format, and if you don't put it in that order or you don't put it in that format or you actually forget one page, you're off to the side, don't even look at you. It is so important that you do every single thing that they ask to a T because they are looking at this on a table probably for hours and they just want to be able to go through and go boom, 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 yeah, boom, 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 yeah. But if you miss a page or if you don't list your photos properly or you don't put them in the right format or you don't title them properly they're gonna take that submission and it's gonna go off to the side and you're not gonna get the job because you didn't follow the orders alright now I know it seems stringent and I know it seems kinda of crazy but if that's the line of work that you want to try to get into you have to play that game in order to kinda of get the submissions so listen if you have any questions about doing a call to artist submission, comment below. I'll see what I can do to answer you. For the most part, you just have to dive in. All right? Don't be afraid of being turned down. All right? You're going to get a lot of no's before you get a couple of yeses. It's okay. It's a numbers game. That's what it's about. The more you submit those applications, the more chances you have actually winning that submission all right so get out there submit some art just try it all right try some small cities first all right okay so funny story my very first submission was in a small town here in Arizona called Casa Grande all right I saw the call to artists on the Phoenix uh, Arts Commission website and it was they're looking for a metal sculpture that was going into a commemorative garden downtown and I'm thinking oh I could probably do something like that so I came up with the design and I got all the paperwork together and I actually submitted you know my entry and within a couple of weeks I actually got a call back to say that I had had won the submission I was ecstatic all right I got chosen. Now granted, it wasn't a lot of money, but I looked at it from a standpoint of if I can get this submission, it goes on my resume that I have done a call to artists, I've done public art, and I can get a good reference out of the city of Casa Grande. So I was super ecstatic. So the board chair, the chairman of the board called me up and he said, hey, we'd like you to come in person and actually make a presentation and so I got all my ducks in a row and I got all my paperwork and I drove an hour and a half down to go do this submission uh, process and, and go interview with these people and I get to the courthouse and I walk in and there's a bunch of teenage kids and I'm thinking oh man maybe I'm in the wrong place or something uh, but nope I was in the right place the Arts Commission had hired a group of teenage kids 
to help improve them in doing business in the adult world. And so this is one of the projects that they had decided that they were going to, to work on. So I gave my presentation to their group. And after the presentation was over, uh, they awarded me the call to artist submission. So I got the piece. So at the end of the presentation, and I'm talking to a few people there, and I singled out uh, one of the people who were in charge and I was thanking them for the opportunity to be able to do this and, and uh, thank you for you know, giving me this submission. Out of curiosity, you know, how many people had applied for the, uh, the project? And he looked at me kind of with this, this uh, sheepish grin and said, actually, you're the only one who applied. And at that point, I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> are you serious? At first, I was a little disappointed um, because it wasn't like in the big leagues. But then I realized I had the opportunity to go through the process. I now have a metal sculpture in the city of Casa Grande and it's there today and people are happy with it and I'm proud of it. Um, and it gave me an opportunity to add that to my portfolio. So it may not be Times Square in New York City, um, but it's about experience and it's about learning and it gave me that opportunity. So that's why it's important for you to get out there and just apply. Um, apply to as many as you can and don't be afraid to kind of try the small ones because they're going to give you the experience to go for the bigger ones. So hey, I'm starting to ramble now, and I apologize for that, but you know, it's kind of dead here in the shop right now. Get out there, be creative, all right? Subscribe to my channel, help me hit a thousand subscribers. That's what my goal is right now, is a thousand. I want a million, but I'll take a thousand for now, all right? Comment down below. If you got questions about submitting to a call to artist submission, uh, ask me the question, and I'll see if I can answer it. Other than that, Get out there, create, have fun, enjoy life, peace.